Welcome, thank you for joining me. And so I'm just going to talk, remind everybody exactly what we are looking at in Scalp School and what we're looking at when I open the room. And then we will talk about um, some of the background to Scalp School, some of the background work that goes into it, and um, you know, how we manage that and how that. Uh, fa gets factored into the work that we do. It's been a great, uh, incredible year, really, so far. Uh, the, the Dow has been a cash machine. Uh, early in the first few months of the year, I was not even bothering with things like oil and not even trading that many stocks at, um, at various points because you could just sit there and make good money on um these indices and for those of you who I've, actually i've posted in the skype room i posted a result of my trading in oil yesterday i made i made a couple of thousand pounds in oil yesterday and i'll um, explain how i did that In the meantime, this is, so we'll start off by talking about the actual system itself. So the system is, originates around this open range. So I talk very freely about the way in which Scalper School, the, the core of Scalper School. So that was the range today. And um, we actually had a sell signal, uh, an entry at the midpoint, and that was 70 pips straight away. Now I actually waited for about 45 minutes. Uh, I bought this support and I traded that up for 50 pips into 500, 25, 500, and took it off for 50 pips. So uh, I didn't take the first trade, I took the second trade and then just left it because this is now, now we're just getting a lot of chop. This is, um, we got, We've had a very, very hectic week. We've come up from a low of uh, 24,600. So we are 900 pips higher in two and a half days. Absolutely amazing. And so it's understandable after 900 pips in two days that we are struggling here and we are in a 100 pip range. The other thing to make a note of is that when you get days um, if you look on the calendar, uh, let me just go and grab a calendar. This is one uh, that is good for everybody to use, whether you are a stock trader or a futures trader. Um, this is forexfactory.com, and if you come on to the calendar icon here, this gives you the, we can have a look at it per week or uh, per day or whatever, depending on uh, how you set it up. But today, the one of the reasons why I'm sitting on my hands quite a lot is uh, this here, beige book. Um, if, if something is red, then it's sort of a priority piece of data. If something is orange, it's mid range. If it's yellow, it's normally has a low impact on the market, but I don't think this should be yellow. Um, the market is wanting, expecting the Fed to cut rates a couple of times this year. Um, so Beige Book is an opportunity to look into whether that is going to be feasible or not, whether it's going to be likely or not. So it's been a busy day. This is a lot of data we've had today. We've had um, German, UK services, European services, US services. So this all, I, I'm not, um, I don't trade the news as such. All I am doing is just making sure I know when there is a lot of news out. And when we've got um, Fed data coming out two hours before the close, then that makes me more cautious. Okay, so That is what we've been doing on the Dow. Let's have a look at the DAX this morning. Uh, we actually triggered short on the DAX. 
here when we broke down through 950 I took a pullback short at 970 and got stopped out I did however suggest that uh, traders might want to think about Uh, are you, are you guys lost the share then? Like something on the share, screen share been turned off. Anyway, it's back on now. Um, yeah, so I suggested once that this move, once I got stopped out here, that you might want to enter here and here for so a, um, a late euro session push higher here and an early US session here uh, it's worked not to any great well this worked to uh, I think it must have been a good 40 50 pips and this was the equivalent so there's two moves you could have got subsequent to that trade uh, and then avoided all this chop so one stop out two op two opportunities to get um, so that one was a stop out for me that one and that one was a goer so this is how, this is typical. You know, I might damage my account or dent my account a little bit in the morning, but that's not to say I'm going to end up on a losing day. And this you can see now this Dow is pushing up. So having already tested 500, we pulled right back and now we're back up to 500 again. So it's a good day. Uh, I have traded oil a lot this week. If I just draw you back to now, I don't sit here and look at five minute charts, but I do instigate my entries off a five minute chart. So there's a big difference, a very, very big difference. Anybody who sits looking at five minute charts for you know, all your analysis and trade opportunities, you are potentially going to get chopped around. And look at the five minute chart here. This is a good example of why five minute, chop, five, five minute charts can chop you around. So it's nothing here, breakout pull back oh that looks as if that's a good buy well that doesn't that doesn't work very much oh that's a good that looks good oh that doesn't work etc etc so you get lots of little moves so i mean obviously we're scalpers so, we're not, so the idea of the of scalper school is to look for look for the break you know either one way or the other and then look for re-entry opportunities so typically, in if you get a wild data move, for example, got non-farm, got US jobs on Friday, I will look for the direction of the market, whether that's up or whether that's down, and then I would look. So that's potentially wave one. Let's say, for example, let's forget that this for the moment. So if we get a very powerful move up, normally I'd look for at least fifty to to hundred points. I would wait for that to trade back to the breakup area. And then assuming that holds, I would then trade that back in the direction that it came from. So it's effectively a one, two, three wave move. Of course, that obviously works the other way. You get a big sell, you wait till it retraces, and then you see if you can break the low um, and then get a move further down. Okay, now on some Fed days, uh, this, can, this can equate to very decent moves, very you know, significant moves. So uh, that's why um, we looked for that. Um, Non-farm payroll, I don't tend to open the trading room for it because it happens, the news announcement is before the Dow opens. So I uh, normally on non-farm payroll, the Dow will read, if, if you get a big move like that, the Dow will come along and open, let's say it's a bearish move, the Dow might retrace up here and then potentially do the same thing. So that might be the data move and that might be the open. Whereas the um, Fed rate announcement, that's a completely different kettle of fish because that happens on the last couple of hours of trading so we're looking for a move uh, into you know, the last of hour, well, hour, hour and a half. So that's a completely different kettle of fish. So anyway, back to what I've been doing on the 
oil. Of course, now, yeah, I'm not coming into oil. I'm not trying to day trade oil without having done a full analysis of what the potential market is. So if I'm looking to buy oil, then I'm looking to look at key areas. That's right, Jim, don't, don't worry. Um, so I'm looking to buy dips if we are looking as if we can push the upside. So if I was, if this was um, January and February, once we had this breakup, and pushed up and sat on this range, then I'd be buying dips, I was buying dips into this range to see if we can have you know, nice breaks. Um, so we've got a Bubka move here, pull back. So I'd start buying again here. I generally trade oil, I scalp oil a couple of, to couple of times a week. And now we've got this, it's in vents today, so that's why I generally don't, well, I do trade oil if it's um, a fairly non-violent move. This was a particularly violent, quite a severe drop and quite a passive pullback, which didn't, ret didn't retrace and then just slowly um, dips. So that, that's not what I'm interested in. There, there were some trades there, but uh, I left it. Okay, so the point of scalping is we're not sitting there looking for studying our five minute charts, getting completely bog eyed with um, you know, five minute charts. I'm doing all the usual um, drilling down from bigger time frames and then looking for um, the bigger moves. Why am I doing it? So why do I scalp? That's a good question. I'll ask myself that question. Um, I scalp because uh, several reasons. A, if you're using a futures account, you're using a lot of leverage. And so particularly with the oil, one cent move in oil with one contract equals $10 on the futures market. So if I'm trading three contracts, I'm trading $30 per cent per one cent. So I don't want, so if I get, when I go into uh, an oil trade, if I've got a 25 plus pip stop with three contracts, that's my stop, uh, I've got three contracts, you know, I'm risking a lot of money. Let me just, um, do you know, I don't actually know what the total is for that, let me try that. 30 times 20. Yeah, I'm risking $750. If it goes the wrong way, I'm short $750. I'm out of pocket $750 on three contracts if I get it wrong. So that's, but if you scalp and you have a system, that's the most important aspect of this, a system. In other words, you know exactly why you want to get in the trade and where you want to get out. So that's why I can take I can take small moves out of this. I can take twenty five cent moves out of this and make um, you know seven hundred and fifty dollars if I decide that the, the market is really buoyant and it's going to you know do a nice big push up or a nice big down down move. I could limit my risks by getting a stop to break even. If my entry is here, or let's say for a long, and it starts to push up then I might scale out <clears throat> on some of these as we hit these prices and bring my stop up. So on occasions, if I'm really bullish, I might sit here with three contracts with a stop locking in, I don't know, say $200 profit and just wait and see. So I'm risk, I lose $200 profit, not lot, not um, capital if I take a trade like this and it rolls over. So I did nearly $2,000 on oil yesterday and I was, you know what, I was only in the trade for, I was in one trade for 10 minutes. I was in one trade for about 
25 to 30 minutes, I think. So I was in, I was in uh, two trades, 40 minutes, and a couple of thousand dollars up. Now, if you are a beginner, or if you are new to scalping even, that's not what you should be doing. This is not, you know, anybody who jumps in with a lot, lot of leverage, you're gonna lose your account very, very quickly. These um, spread betting accounts, these retail accounts, will let you um, trade with reasonable leverage, and you can choose, uh, if you're doing contracts for different CFDs, you can just go in at one, one contract and um, literally just have a, you know, the equivalent of one or two pounds a point. And still potentially, you know, if you sit in and keep your stop out of trouble, um, you could potentially be in that for quite a decent move. Okay, so that's, so that's a quick intro to A, what I look for in at the open and how I enter a trade. B, how I could potentially manage a trade in terms of risk management. Um, as I've explained why I, I would want to scalp. If I want to buy this longer term, you, um, you know, if you, you see this buy signal down here on 11th of February, so the price came into this day at 52.60. It dropped to 51.60 and then closed right on the nail, closed right on that support. So the chances of that pushing higher after that rejection of the lows and the buyers came in on those lows, that's a high probability trade because that's a lot of support. You can see there's a lot of history, but even back here. So if you want to swing trade that, you could day trade it and swing trade it. Uh, one option, I don't talk about this in scalping very much, but one option you've got is you could, for example, trade limited amount of contracts for difference or exchange traded fund here. And then you could supplement the, because you're focused on this chart and you have expectations for that chart, you could take slices of the market um, just on the way up, you know, I don't know 50, 100 pip move here, 50, 100 pip move here, etc. until you get to resistance, maybe stop, going on the long side, wait until, until it pulls back and you get some buy signals, and then take more, you know, 50, 100 pips, 50, 100 pips, while, all the time while you're in a potential long-term trade. Uh, alternatively, another way you could do this, if you think, um, let, let's say for example, this is a stock, or well, this is, um, you could, for example, once you see a sell signal and enter short on a stock or oil or whatever it is you're trading, you could hedge. So for example, you get two big down days and then you get the market perks up. So you could hold your short long-term short here and scalp to the upside offer that support. So all the time you are sitting short on oil, where you get waves to the upside, let's just drag this over, you could you could scalp to um, counteract the way in which the oil is going against you. So there's another reason to scalp. Um, apart from that, you could just scalp for daily income if you. The, but the key is the reason why some people lose money on day trading is because they don't they just don't have a system. They might, uh, some people might look for five minute pin bars with RSI. Um, other people might look for um, uh, they might have other candles they like or other, other sorts of tri triggers that they think is gonna take them in. But the, what I'm looking for is the direction on the day. So if that's the open range, I, on a good day, and this works, um, it's higher probability on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, but on a good day, if a market bursts one way, you can grab your 25 pips plus, and if it retraces for another entry, which is what I recommend for on the DAX today, then you could get at least one, one the next move might be a break, but a really good break. 
So on the second entry, you could get your stock to break even, leave some profit on the table, or even lock some profit in, and see if you can get a break on the second trade, already having banked your 25 pips. Okay, so the normal definition of scalping for, for most people is you know, five to 10 pips. I, I have met a guy who's, who trades the euro versus the US dollar, and he only looks for 10 pips, you know, a tiny move, but he trades 50 pounds a point. So he's looking for 500 pounds every day on the back of a 10 pip move on the euro. I don't think that's feasible. That's not my style of trading. But he makes money out of it. So, you know, as I say to anybody who makes, as long as you have a system and it generates profit, then keep using it. Keep doing the same thing every day and expect the same results. Okay, let's look at a, let's look at Forex. And I don't often trade Forex. I used to trade a lot, but um, when you get a, a range bound market like this, it's not so much fun and this is uh not uh this is you know a very limited range for me if you look at the range of that one against the range of this one the volatility in the dow this is much more fun okay i mean you can really i mean when, when this was dropping here on yeah, that, that was another 900 pip drop. Uh, sorry, uh, that's, sorry, that was a 900 pip drop last week. And we've got now a 900 pip, close to 900 pip bounce. So these are good ways to day trade. Any questions? The one thing I used, I used to day trade uh, grains beans but um, I, haven't, I don't vote very rarely trade them now if you look at them like I haven't got enough data here but if you go back to 0506 I've been day trading a long time if you go back to 0506 there was some huge moves in fact the market was locked up three days in a row um, there is a limit what's called a limit on these futures market in grains if the, if it moves more than 70 cents in one day they just shut the market they close the market down and for three days in 0506 um, beans moved it was limit up three days in a row so it literally opened moved 70 cents shut opened moved 70 cents shut 70 cents shut did that for three days so uh, you know a two dollar ten cent move if you have um let's say you have you know three contracts again you are losing you'd be out of pocket um you know, grains moving quarters cents not whole cents like oil you're losing about four thousand dollars probably more and there's nothing you can do about it, absolutely nothing. That's why um, you know, you've got to be very, very careful with oil and grains. Um, and oil, if you do want to day trade oil, and it's a great market to be in, you need to know, it's very different from indices, it moves very differently. Um, because it has different open times, different close times, different peak times of the week. Um, different cycles, well, I say different cycles, if you look at the daily tra trajectory of oil, uh, if you now look at the NASDAQ, um, there is a quite a close correlation between oil and NASDAQ. Interesting how this one's only had, this is quite different from Dow, isn't it? It's only had one big day to, uh, one big day this week. That's a worrying sign. The fact that that stayed low while the Dow was pushing up on Tuesday, uh, sorry, Monday and Tuesday. That's, you know, what the, DAX, what the NASDAQ does, the rest of the market follows. So the fact this was so sluggish, into Monday and didn't bounce until Tuesday, that's lagging the Dow. So um, 
Yeah, that's that's quite a concern. If we just pop up here and pop back into seventy one fifty, that's these markets are in trouble. What I suspect is going to happen, I suspect we're going to see seventy two ninety. Um, and if we can't close above that seventy three, we really are in trouble. Okay, so yeah, I'm concerned. Let's have a look at what the Dow is doing at the moment. Let's come back to the five minute Dow. This is why, if you're trading on five minute charts without the range, let's just have a look at what this that this is with the range. That that's just pretty much that's a pretty tight range mess, isn't it? A few little attempts to get through five hundred. Um, and a few attempts to buy it off off the lows, off the base, and there we are, really not doing much. So, any questions? Any questions at all? Um, so, what what I've not shown you here is the anchor system. I know we've got a few members in the room, and that's why I will be going through the. Anchor system with you guys direct um, later this week. So I just need to fix up a time when you're all around and uh, then go through the anchor system in, de in detail because it's the anchor system that really is the edge of scalp school. That's where the um, you can tell if the market is setting up for bigger moves and the anchor system tells you if the market is reversing intraday or intraweek and so you are getting ahead ahead of the curve just through the anchor chart and which means that if you are scalping and a good break opportunity comes in you could you can stand a chance of uh, looking to uh, get in on that and potentially hold futures contracts or you know a wider range of CFDs or whatever you're trading for a bigger move. So although yeah so like I said you although we are scalping for 25 pips and the first part of the Euro session, the US session, um, you know there is the opposite it all depends on what you want to get out of scalping. You know, whether you just want to grab 25 pips and close your platform or whether you are hedging a position or whether you are actually looking for bigger moves and there are ways of doing that with it even within even though it is a scalping um, membership so um, you can scalp uh, stocks I have you so one other option is uh, let's look at something like uh, uh, let's go to Facebook. Uh, there is a particular system for that I've used for day trading stocks. Um, Nasdaq stocks open earlier than Dow and S and P stocks, so the pre-market activity. Can be picked up and you can find opportunities in day trading stocks if you have a, a system that allows you to pick up on where the pre-open volume is coming in from but um, let's have a look at the let's pick a day for the let's have a look at yesterday on Facebook actually uh, this is yesterday so let's look at 2.30, the cash open. Okay, this only shows you. Okay, they used to, they used to show you the, uh, that's the first 15 minute range of Facebook. So you can see it found some support down there from the previous day. So Monday's low was 161, Tuesday's low was 161, hit it twice, and then went on a run from 161 to 
168, yeah, 168. So you could day trade stocks. Uh, you would only have to be, this pretty much does its whole run by six o'clock. So if it's hitting resistance and you've made your money, then walk away. But you can get there's much, much bigger moves. Um, I'll show you a really big move. Okay. Um, okay. That's I thought it was better than that. Uh, what's the other one? I've forgotten. Other things you could do is some, uh, I don't day trade gold, but gold is another. I have traded gold on futures, but it's a very thin market, so I generally don't bother. Um, but that's that's another option that you could get into if you day trade gold or even intra week trade gold. Wow, it's had a decent pop this week. Yeah, it's, it's a it's a volatile market, isn't it? So uh, last week's support, yeah, last week it did nothing. Look at that. How you you can't day trade that? That's, that isn't, <laughs> you won't make any money out of that. So we have that support and resistance at twelve seventy five, twelve eighty seven. Uh, launched off of that support overnight Friday. So it's not you would have had to have bought that. To make any money out of it, you had to bought that Thursday morning, Thursday midday, and sat in it until the end of the week, which is no, yeah, it's not been a very long time, is it? So 40, getting on for two days would have given you a move from 12.75 to 13.05. If I was trading that this week, um, That's not easy. That's not easy making money out of that gold. I would I wouldn't touch that until that came back down to 13, 1305, and then tried to see if that could push up. But that's anyway. So that's a quick introduction to what I'm doing here. Um, like I said. Uh, I've got several members in the room, so I will um, what I will go into much, much greater detail about the anchor system with you later in the week. Um, anybody else that really wants to get involved, the next program is the 15th of June. Now, I after the 15th of June, I'm putting the price up. I haven't put the price up for three years. I was due to do it on the 1st of June, but various things got delayed. So I've postponed it until the 15th of June. So it goes up to 675 on the 15th of June after that. Um, if you are wanting to book, book in on that, then let me know. Um, all members are able to do free retakes. So I, normally every program has two or three people coming back for a retake just to do a refresher just to make absolutely sure that they're confident um, about the system. And I do occasionally make minor tweaks to it. The markets change a little bit every now and again. So I make sure everybody's up to date with the changes. And um, that's what I'm, looking, what I'm looking for. So if you're interested, then let me know. Otherwise, um, I will be looking at, I will be, running this session again next Wednesday for a quick update on what these markets are doing. And let's look at the bigger picture on this. So I think this Dow, I think this Dow could potentially see 26,000. You can see we're just breaking above 500 at the moment. Um, so I would, but at that point, 26,000, that could pot potentially take us back into the back end of June in towards July. And at that point, I would look to short that if that uh, gave me a sell signal up at the top there. Uh, 
and I very uh, I do follow Eliway pattern, so I use that as a key tool as well. That helps. So this is um, impulse wave pull back two wait one two three four five and then a one two three wave correction. Uh, after you've had a five and three wave move, you normally revert back to the initial direction, and then you get a one two three four five. It's much tamer, much much tamer, and we just run out of steam and then rolled over. So we get a one two three wave drop so if we get um, a push into this area here then I'm looking to get short right I am going to leave it there unless you've got any questions for me you've all been fairly quiet I don't, um, so it's a, it's a simple system peak times of the day Trading in a room together. Uh, the chat room is working five days a week. There is an alert system and um, Monday training as well. 7 p.m., 6 p.m. on Monday, we do uh, a training session together as well, which uh, members are encouraged to come along to and uh, ask questions. You can use it as a sort of a trader's clinic uh, as well as preparing for. The week ahead. I can see oil has done quite a decent bounce here. So this could bring oil back into play. If we get the same sort of setup as February and we start closing above 53, uh, then I will start to look to get into that. Okay, there's no questions coming through, so I will say goodbye and thanks very much for joining me. And do come back. Yes, uh, by all means, I will just, uh, if you haven't got my, I, th I think you have got my number, haven't you? Jim, um, you haven't, right. Okay, I'll just give it to you before you, actually I've got, yeah, I'll give it to you before you go, hang on. Right, I've just sent you, well, it could be, doesn't have to be a private message sent to everybody. Give me a ring and um, thanks very much for joining me. You know, we're getting quite, getting a bit of a, a bounce now. Right, thanks a lot. By all means, email me or um, ring me and uh, I'll talk to you very soon. Thank you. Bye.